Cam here from Xano Support, and today we're going to be going over something really exciting. That is bringing your data from Airtable to Xano. We make the process incredibly easy, but there are a couple differences between these tools. Where Airtable, typically we set formulas and rollups at the column level. But with Xano, we have triggers and function stacks where we can create our business logic to do the same. So let's go ahead and show how we bring our data from Airtable to Xano. And we go ahead and create that same functionality with formulas and rollups inside Xano using the function stack. First things first, we want to make sure that we have data within our Airtable. So if we head to our Airtable, we can see that we do. And this data comes from our software employee directory template. I've made a couple adjustments here to our data. Namely, under our departments, I've changed this employee count to a rollup so that we can demonstrate what it looks like inside Xano. Rollups and formulas are going to import as texts. So we'll take a look in just a second within Xano how to get those to actually behave the same. We also have our employee time off, our expenses, and I've added this additional table, pay, where we have this formula that's calculated with hourly times hours to get our pay. So we'll explore again how to get that inside Xano, but the question is how do we get this data inside Xano? We're going to navigate to the top right, click our icon, and head to our developer hub. You'll be presented with this page where we can create a personal access token. We're going to go ahead and call this our Xano token, and we're going to add some scopes. The scopes that we're going to be adding are going to be our read scopes. We aren't going to be writing anything, we're just going to be reading, and we also don't have to worry about those webhooks. After we've added these four scopes, we're then going to add an access. This access is going to say, well, we're either giving this token the ability to see all current and future workspaces, this current workspace and future bases, or just this current base. So we'll select just this current base and create this token. When we've created this token, we can see here that it is going to disappear. We only get to see it one time, so we want to make sure that we can store it securely. I'm going to head into Xano, head to my settings, and in my environment variables, I'm just going to call this the Airtable token, and I'll paste this here for safekeeping. Then I'm going to go ahead and head to my API groups, where I'm going to preemptively create an API group called Airtable import. This is going to be when we are generating our CRUD endpoints, all of them will exist within this group. Now we're going to head to our database where we'll go ahead in the top right, select add table, import data, select air table, and then paste in our personal access token. You can also select this checkbox here. You can remember your personal access token so that the future you come back, it will be here. Now, of course, best practice is to have it in multiple places so that if we do lose it or misplace it, we can always recover it. So I'll go ahead and keep that checkbox selected and click next. I'll then select the base that this access token has access to, and then the tables. So we have the ability to select or deselect the tables we want to import, as well as the attachments. Do we want to bring in the images or media from Airtable? Or do we want to go ahead and keep it in Airtable and reference it with URLs? We're going to go ahead and download all the attachments, bring them into Xano. And then we have the ability to select if we want to create these basic CRUD endpoints within Xano. And we'll go ahead and keep that selected and select the Airtable import group that we had just created. So we'll click this blue import button, and then in just a couple of moments, we'll go ahead and see all of this data within Xano. After the import process has completed, you'll see this green bar up top that says to update Xano. So we'll go ahead and click that. And when we do, we get to see all of our data. So we'll click show table relationships, and we can see that we've been able to actually map the relationships. And we can see this in this awesome view here. So I'll deselect this and let's just look at this employee directory here. The employee directory has, it looks like a list of departments for each user. What we want to do is head to our departments and we want to adjust this rollup. You can see it's a text, just like I had mentioned prior. We want to go ahead and right click, change that type of text and change it to an integer and click save. So what we want to do is using Xano's no code builder, we're going to go ahead and create a function that goes ahead and actually calculates this for us. If we add to library and then function, we're going to go ahead and add a new function and we'll call this our department count and we'll go ahead and click save. What we want to do first is click this blue plus sign to add a function to our function stack. We're going to go ahead and select our query all records and our departments. We're going to head to our output tab and we'll go ahead and customize this. We'll customize the response and remove the created at department head and employees and click save. And then we're going to go ahead and change this name to just departments and click save. We'll update the reference for all of the areas in the function stack where this table is referenced. And then we'll go ahead and run and debug just to see what this data looks like. 
You can see here that we have sales, product design, engineering, executive, and marketing. The employee counts, these are not dynamic at the moment. These are still the imported values. So if I head back here, I'm going to go ahead and delete these so that they don't exist. And then we're going to go run and debug this again. So we have no employee counts. So the first thing that we need to do is query our data. Once we have our data, we can see that it is in a list form with six different items. So we want to loop over these items. I'm going to click this blue plus sign and I'll go ahead and navigate to the for each loop in the top right hand corner. It's asking us, what is the list we're going to be iterating over? And that's our departments. We'll call each item that we're iterating over a department and we'll click save. From there, we need to add a function in this loop. We're going to go ahead and head to our database requests again and query all records, where now what we're going to be doing is looking at our employee directory. We're going to be adding a custom query or some constraints here where what we'll do is we'll look at the department column and we'll say, is it in the department dot ID? And I'm using the dot ID here because you can see that each department or each item within these two curly brackets has an ID associated with the name. So as we look through all of these items within the employee directory, we're going to be looking for the departments where that department we're currently looping over exists. We'll open it back up and head to output. And what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to head to this return blue pencil, select it and return it as count. I'll go ahead as well as change that return as to count. And then I'm going to add one more step. I'll head to my database requests and I'll edit my record of departments. I'm going to be editing my department dot ID or the current department we're iterating over is ID. So I'll be able to locate that record within the data table. And then I'll head to my employee count and update this with the count value that we get as a response in the previous step. I'll go ahead and run this again. And we can see that we have an employee count that has been updated as it is an error table. Let's go ahead and take a look. We can see that design has four, executive has two, and the rest have one. So if we head back into error table and head back into our data, Let's head to our departments and we can see that our design has four, our executive has two, and the rest have one. So we've been able to create this rollup function within our function stack that emulates the behavior that you would expect with an error table. We'll go ahead and publish that in the top right. And now we can go ahead and use that within our actual application. Now that's not the only thing that needs to be adjusted though. We also have this pay table. Now this pay table as our hourly and hours. And what we want to do is be able to adjust one of these and, or either of these and have our pay column updated. Let's right click on our pay column and change the type from text to integer and click save. Next, we're going to head to our top right where we click these three dots and head to triggers where we'll add a database trigger and we'll call this our pay formula. We're going to scroll down a little bit and ensure that this works whenever a record is inserted or updated and we'll click save. In a trigger, we pass in both the new record and the old record. What we're going to be doing here is using our new record just to be able to calculate the new pay. What we're going to do in our function stack is at our database requests, and we're going to edit our record. We're going to be editing the pay data table, and it's asking us, well, which record? If we have the ID, which record is that? Well, we're going to be selecting our new records dot ID. So our new ID. We'll then navigate to our pay where we're going to go ahead and say that it's our new dot hourly just to this column up above. And we're going to add a filter here where we go ahead and multiply the new dot hours and click update and save. We'll go ahead and publish this and we'll go ahead and test this. We'll head back into our data table and we'll go ahead and adjust our hours to 10 here. So 10 times 50, if we refresh, this is 500. So you can see that the formula here is working or the trigger that we've created where we take that new dot hourly column and multiply it by the new dot hours column to get the new pay. So as you can see, when we import from Airtable to Xano, we make it a pretty painless process. And then with Xano, of course, you have the ability to control things on a much more granular and modular level, giving you ultimate control and flexibility in the way that your application performs and behaves. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those within the comment section. You can also reach out to us within the support chat within your instance on the left hand side. And you can also reach out to us within the community. We'd love to hear your thoughts and 
well, help you out in whichever way is possible. Thanks so much for watching and take care.